Welcome to Behavioral Finance and Fintech. I'm Andy Kim and uh, until now we've been going through the history of GameStop and then what happened until January 27th, right? Basically those hedge funds, Citron Research and then Melvin Capital, they pissed off those individual investors who are hoping that this GameStop will recover, regain, right, I just say, uh, make a turnaround and then become a successful online retailers of game companies, right? game uh, consoles, right? How did they piss off these re retail individual investors? Um, the hedge fund said, you suckers, and then bad words, right? And then despising it, right? Uh, they, in a, in a sense, they invited trouble, their own trouble. Now, individual investors uh, uh, using those social media like Reddit and then Wall Street bets, they try to revenge against the short sellers, right? Through wisdom of crowd. And once the individuals observe the short's interest, um, they share the information and join the forces together to revenge against those hedge funds. And then they, they had bad feelings about the hedge funds uh, ever since 2008, the global financial crisis. Those 1% versus 99% us kind of mindset. Uh, waiting for that time to revenge, right? Um, and you call us suckers? Now, some suggested the idea of gamma squeeze in addition to the short squeeze. How does that work, gamma squeeze? To shoot up the stock price even further. Well, it's about the call option. Now, call option is the right to buy a stock for a lower strike price than the current market price. For example, you bought a call option of GameStop from a bank, your counterparty, that enables you to buy a stock for $30 a share uh, of game stock next year stop next year next let's say the price is rising rapidly now and that it's almost sure that the price would be around $100 by the expiration date next month right now on the expiration date if that happens then you would exercise the call option and realize $70 gain which would be a loss to the bank x your counterparty which is 30 minus 100 equals minus 70, their loss. Your gain is their loss. Zero sum game. That's option market, right? The thing is, uh, if you are the bank X, right? You don't want to lose money like that, right? Um, given that you know that the price is hiking up, hiking up, it's not $100 yet. What would you do? Buy it before it reaches $100 while the price is low enough, okay? For example, buy the stock at $50, perhaps, and then wait until next month. And then, uh, you know, how much would be your loss? $20 loss, right, uh, from your part, uh, from the bank's part. Even though, you know, this guy, in uh, you, you bought the call option, you still gained $70. Um, the bank will not lose that $70 uh, to the full, okay, by acquiring this stock beforehand right and that creates additional demand for GameStop the problem is that the bank would push buy button together with you right now which means explosive demand increases the consequence the price shoots up even further to the extreme degree right gamma squeeze so the price went up to $400 level starting from $30 right and plus many piranha kind of <laughs> investors uh, swarm uh, against these guys, right? Those short sellers, the, you know, how many sh shares are short sold and then it's on the short interest. They knew that position and then and then, you know, everybody jumps in and pray on you, right? Not pray for you, they pray upon you, right? The billionaires and the other hedge fund managers jumped into the uh, squeeze to make their own money. For example, Chamath uh, Palihapitiya, ex-Facebook uh, ex executive and a venture capitalist, bought call options to GameStop to worsen that short squeeze and gamma squeeze. Then comes the next big thing, which is GameStonk by Elon Musk. What does stonk means? 
that's like bombard them like bombard game stunk and then screw up those hedge funds short sellers right i'm with you retail investors it's like a right <clears throat> so if you see this price chart on that day intraday right on january 28th this is the price movement instantly like minute by minute the range is like what hundred dollars difference or more holy cow is this a price chart right um buying and selling right crazy and ants or ants is a word for korean terminology for individual investors because we are helpless like a, a patsy ants no, don't know what to do but they're joined forces together through social media and then you got a fun you management see this guy in South Korea? talking um newton chang is, is the I should is the show hugest you this guy. investment company Again. in Korea. Again. They're wild. Um, yeah. And then... Young Cha. Young Cha. American guy. Um, Young Cha. Young Cha. Young Cha. This whole movie, Koreans, this whole stock has young is cha, literally changing the world cha, as we see. And they learn Koreans, right? Isn't that crazy? Like um, it's legitimately through this changing YouTube, right? You see young cha, young cha the world. and kazia kind of things. He learned it. And one of the uh, you know, this is one of the popular fund management in uh, South Korea. Memes, right? People start Newton to Chain share. is the is right? the hugest Investment company in Korea. Yeah, they're watching my right. stream right let's now. Let's go. Who would have yeah, thought? That happened. Guys, Zuo, let's oh, go. Very fun. Over 2,000 but viewers. We're making history, is, my friends and um, children and boys and girls and all my South Koreans. Yeah, I should shut my mouth up. Anyway, the thing is, meme stock, heyday. Um, not only GameStop, but also AMC, BlackBerry, and then all those kind of good old days, uh, memories, stocks, right? Um, they joined together, and then with it, Melvin Capital was screwed. And then, uh, uh, you know, this is one of the memes that people enjoyed with this event, right? And then, um, one more important thing that I have to highlight is this one: allies versus enemies. There comes a total surprise. Robin Hood, right? Robin Hood. Why are you here? Niga we nawa kind of idea. What do you mean? Why are you here? Robin Hood, right? I told you. They, on January 28th, removed this buy button from the app without any announcement. Only the sell button was available, which means you retail investors just to sell it if you want or just keep it. Don't buy additionally for this uh, GameStop, which means the demand will not increase as much so that the price increase will be limited but this going down the price decrease will be unlimited for you right um well isn't that essentially helping those squeeze the hedge funds right melvin capital and then the citron research wasn't this robin hood helping them was a concern and then uh, you know the robin hood had been Famous for being zero trading fee app, um, claiming financial democratization. And then we are working for the 99% of you, right? Not for the top 1%, the hedge fund guys. Great. Sounds great. But are you really working for us is a question. Stock investment like uh, made the stock investment like gaming fun, like all these kind of explosive pictures and fun pictures shows up as you buy and sell in the stock, right? Um, that was Robin Hood's approach. And but why did they remove this buy button, right, on that very important day? Okay. Now, the Robin Hood CEO Vladimir Tenev, right? Vlad Tenev uh, has this kind of excuse. They, he said the stock clearing house NSCC demanded abruptly $3 billion more of cash because of the insane volatility. I, the insane is my word, but the high volatility of the stock price of the meme stocks, including GameStop, right? Um, what is that 
clearing house and then cash deposit about? Well, it mechanically, institutional detail is like this. Um, two days after buy and sell orders are executed, cash comes in and goes out of the account. So the price volatility in the meantime could cause some defaults of the customers and then the, that could be troublesome for the brokerage houses like Lou uh, Robin Hood. Um, if one buys at the highest price and the price halves in a day, the clearinghouse runs the risk of not receiving enough cash from the brokerage house. So if you, uh, if you brokerage company want to buy, uh, make sure you put enough of cash in the clearinghouse. That's the story here. That was his excuse. Um, sounds like okay, making sense maybe. But uh, why did you have to do it without any announcements, right? And still something fishy. And gets more, even more fishy if you look at the track record of Vladimir Tenev. Vlad Tenev, that's this guy. Um, <clears throat> his business model of Rubin Hood, even more. It's free of charge for retail investors to buy and sell stocks. But then, how does this Rubin Hood make money? What's their business model? Okay. Um, as it turns out, by selling your trading data, trading record of those individual investors to the hedge funds, especially high frequency trading companies. I told you about high frequency trading. And then, why should it be retail investors trading data? Um, it is precious information for high frequency traders and hedge funds and any one of you every one of you who learned behavioral finance up until now from my class must be aware of the importance of individual investors trading record trading data the tick data why it carries those information about the investor psychology right you can infer what must have triggered this guy to buy and sell those stock? And you can study based on behavioral finance uh, concepts and test whether that kind of behavioral biases affect these uh, investors to do stupid mistakes and things like that. And by that, you can identify profit-taking opportunity as high-frequency traders and hedge funds, right? Or short sellers. For example, watching CNBC television and short selling it. That you can confirm using this kind of data, right? And there could be a lot, tons of other opportunities that are not studied yet. But by using this retail investor's data, you can test whatever way you want it. Hedge funds like Citadel, right? And some high frequency traders that are ex experts in short selling. Yeah, without the approval of retail customers, th these uh, Robin Hood, right? Democratizer were selling your data to them so that they could make money. Robinhood got caught by the SEC and paid $600 million worth of penalty or more in 2020. They announced the negative news only after the fine was determined. Lack of communication and ethical sense is lacking and illegal, by the way. Bad practice. Punished already. Bad track record tells a lot about their behavior. And another thing, Rubin Hood, right? Once they receive your buy order and sell order from your machine, they are not the one who really execute the trade. They, the, they send your trading order to market makers. Those insider of the insiders of the Wall Street, the most important handful of guys who are really buying and selling those stocks. Who are they? Well, many of them, but the most notable one is Citadel. Citadel Securities is the big, big fish market maker. And then the thing is, Robinhood disproportionately allocated more of the execution order to Citadel Securities instead of other securities houses, right? What is the special relation going on? We don't know. Very dubious. And Citadel happened to be, okay, uh, one of the guys who bought this one. And then one of uh, Citadel happened to be the ones who sends bailout money, who ba paid the bailout money for Melvin Capital that was squeezed in the GameStop, meme stock, all right? And uh, this, uh, you know, <laughs> all happenings, right? 
they went bust. And then this guy was rescuing this guy this time. Ken Griffin. And then Guy, uh, Gabriel Platkin, right? Citadel. The thing is, the Gabriel uh, pa Platkin used to be the subordinate of this guy long time ago in Citadel. Special relations still goes on. And then bailout money. And then Robin Hood was, tr you, know, you know, in a special relation with these guys. They're all in the same group. And still claiming that they are a financial democratizer. Oh my God. And as it turns out, if you look back and look back his uh, track record even further, it's more dubious. This guy uh, used to be a math PhD student at UCLA and Stanford math uh, bachelor's degree. Math genius from Eastern Europe, Vlad Tenev, his name speaks, right? And this guy um, founded Celeris on HFT, High Frequency Trading Company. You know what High Frequency Trading is by now. Three years before founding Robin Hood. That tells a lot about why he founded Robin Hood. And he also founded Kronos Research that were making software for algorithmic tradings in 2011. That's two years before Robin Hood. Oh, so Robin Hood. Are you finance, a financial democratizer or financial hypocrisy? Right? A financial democracy or financial hypocrisy? It's a w question worth asking, right? The evidence tells this story. Right? So this is something we have to be aware of when we talk about financial democratization using fintech. Who is behind it? Financial engineering, you say it. Financial engineering, is that a panacea for cure-all, for all everybody, everybody like you and me? Maybe not. Anyway, uh, Andrew Left of Stitron Research did a broadcast saying, giving up. Oh my God, I lost. He said, we'll never publish a short selling report anymore from now. <laughs> you, you won, we lost, right? Um, so eventually they went like this. So that was a very interesting event. And then subsequently, the US, uh, the House, how one, right? House uh, held a hearing, Cheongmone, right? Uh, bringing all these guys and then asking questions intensively. And then Keith Gill, right? Couldn't be more sincere at this point, right? In this uh, the hearing setting. Instead of like this, in his usual <laughs> setting, uh, he was claiming that, you know, I like this stock, I still hold this stock. I never sold it you know, for, for, you know, I was not manipulating the price or anything. Sincere, yeah. You could see that facial expression, all this body language, all those gestures, very sincere. You could see that. Ryan Cohen, uh, subsequently, what happened to this company? Well, um, Ryan Cohen was elected the chairman of the board of GameStop in April, and Matt Furling and then uh, Mike Recupero of Amazon were appointed as the CEO and CFO, respectively, for this company. And then the company announced that it will start an NFT business platform uh, in May, non fungible token kind of business. So, subsequently, the, you know, consequently, the price of this stock was you know at 160 dollars range uh, up until recently so the price level more than 10 times increase yeah it happened with only one oh no not, not just only one the retail investors impact right thanks to the social media it's kind of one of this uh, a, uh um uh, what is it? The one could say that that could be one of these uh, the the uh, Louis Trader risk, but it's much more than that. And now we see the impact of social media coming in as a real threat to the short sellers, right? Um, lack of lenders and this kind of issues. I'm going to talk about it in the next videos. So thanks for watching it.